Hello everybody, this is Seth David and this is our webcast for May 6, 2009. Hope you had a great Cinco de Mayo. I hope you're having an even better Seis de Mayo. And today we have a webcast for you that's going to go over how to do real estate or, or how to handle a rental real estate property and specifically how to handle security deposits when you're doing it in QuickBooks. And what we're going to do is bring you right over into our sharing screen so that we can show you the best way to set this up. Go to full screen view and what happens is when you take in a new renter they're going to give you a security deposit in addition to their rent and they're going to have one check for that amount. Moreover the way I have people set up their real, uh, rental real estate in QuickBooks is such that you're actually posting invoices for the rent each month. Even though you're not necessarily going to give your renters an invoice what I'm doing is I'm doing it through an invoice in QuickBooks because this way I have a nice mechanism in place that enables me to capture the rents and on the next day, on the second of the month, I can run a report in two seconds that shows me whose rent hasn't been paid yet. And if you're in California, and many other states probably work the same way, I can now run that report and in two seconds have a list on the second of whose rent hasn't been paid so I can give that to my property manager and say here go post the three day notices on these people's doors and at the same time I can structure the reports so that I have their phone numbers on there which means I can do another copy and give it to somebody in my office and have them call up and say hey you know we didn't get your rent have you sent it did it cross in the mail can we come pick it up all that sort of thing so it's really important to set up the right tracking system when you set it up in QuickBooks because there's a lot of ways you can do it so the first key is setting up your customers in QuickBooks and a customer is basically going to be the property and then a job within that customer is going to be how you set up each unit so my property might be at 452 Main Street and then I have renters in apartments A, B, C, D and E so let's say it's a five unit apartment so this is how I want to set that up in QuickBooks now the next thing is I want to set up my items because if I'm invoicing then that means I'm involving items so I want to set up these service items the first one of course is I need to be able to capture the rent and if I choose to edit that real quick I can show you how this is set up it's called rent the description comes up monthly rent <coughs> and the account it's tied to is the rental income account pretty straightforward pretty logical now I go to my security deposits now here's where oftentimes I find as a consultant that it's not accounted for correctly. But the way I like to set this up is to have a separate item for each unit. And in the description I can have it actually say security deposit. And then the account I'm going to link it to is actually a liability account on the books under security deposits with sub accounts one for each unit and this enables me to track each unit security deposits separately on the books and that's going to become real important especially when I'm filing the tax return because if I have an LLC or an S Corp or a Corp then there's a balance sheet associated with that tax return and the CPA who's doing the tax return is going to want to know what are the security deposits on account so that's why it's important to set it up this way because I can run my balance sheet run my balance sheet and see exactly what security deposits are on the books which means at some point I'm going to have to repay this money and it's important information to know that because I need to make sure at all times that I have enough cash in the bank to cover that in fact in California technically it's required by law to keep those security deposits in a separate account and never use them very few people actually do that in practice but as long as at any given time I can demonstrate that I have the money in the bank to cover the security deposits in case everybody got up on the same day and said they're moving out tomorrow I could I'd have the money there to cover all the security deposits that's the important thing so that's how you want to set this up what I do next is I post my invoice and because of the way I've set it up I can start typing apartment A and that way it doesn't matter who's in there but of course I would probably put that person's information in the customer profile but I just want to know to uh, invoice apartment A and I'm going to just tab through all this and the first line is going to be rent and let's say the rents a thousand dollars and let's say it's a security deposit and that's apartment A and that comes up and let's say it's two thousand let's say their credit was no good typically it's going to be one or two months rent depending on their credit and when I save this what I can do now is I can show you in the chart of accounts what that looks like so I'm going to go to lists and chart of accounts it's right here and when I click on that it brings up what you already see here and you can see I've got my accounts receivable is 3000 because I posted that invoice and haven't received the check yet 
and security deposits are there for 2000 the parent account of course shows the total so I've got my security deposit there in apartment A next thing I want to do is get the check so I've got my check I go to customers and I go to receive payments and it brings up my customer payment dialog so now I start typing apartment A again comes right up and they're gonna write me a check for three thousand because it includes both the rent and the security deposit so now I have a check for three thousand and an invoice for three thousand you can see the problem if I had posted an invoice just for the rent and only showed it for a thousand dollars I would have an overpayment here to account for and then frankly I'd have to post a journal entry to offset the extra two thousand get it out of here and put it into the security deposit liability account so this saves me all that trouble I have a system in place that's real easy and then the next thing I want to do is record the next month's invoice for just a thousand dollars and then memorize that and tell QuickBooks to automatically enter that transaction each and every month and of course I'm gonna set it to go off on the first but you'll see there's also an option when you're memorizing the invoice to tell QuickBooks to actually enter the transaction several days before the effective date of the transaction and it's really easy you just right click the invoice and do it I don't have time to go through it in this webcast the next thing of course we want to do now that we've received the payment and assuming we received a whole bunch of rents we apply them to the invoices and now they're all sitting in the undeposited funds account which is what we use as a mechanism to capture all those checks together so now I can deposit them in one lump sum at the bank so I go to banking and I go to make deposits and because I have things in undeposited funds QuickBooks gives me this payments to deposit dialog that you see right here and what I want to do is check off I would have obviously all the rents here I check them all off it would give me the total of all the checks and click OK and if the rents were received on May 1st it's presumable that I'd be making the deposit the next day and now I can hit save and close and now I'm ready to go now I can run my report and see whose rent hasn't been paid based on any open invoices and now I know who to get in touch with to collect the rents and for that matter if I want to who to charge uh, late rent fees and that's pretty much how you set it up I know I go through it quickly we do have a class that I recorded a while back on how to do this in much more detail a full one and a half hour presentation I don't have it up in the learning center right now because I felt I could do better so if you're interested in that email us at classes at nerdenterprises.com and mention that you'd like to get that class and I'll re-record it soon and make it available for download we've cut back on all the download prices in the learning center everything is now just ten dollars and of course there's still the free webcast in our forum so go to our website at www.nerdenterprises.com and if you want more free webcasts like this one go to the forum and you'll see all the old webcasts that we've done not all of them but I'm posting them up as we go and visit the learning center for more of a full-length tutorial just like this but an hour and a half to three hours in duration depending on the class and they're all just ten dollars so visit our learning center and go download the classes we'll help you get your business set up and organized and get you going from the bookkeeping and the finance to the budgets and the forecast contact us if you need any more information info at nerdenterprises.com for general information classes at nerdenterprises.com for the learning center have a great day and have a great week